Today we're going to be talking about how to add a router and turn the Wi-Fi off on your T-Mobile 5G home internet. And specifically we're going to be talking about the Sagemcom Fast 5688W gateway. This is not to be confused with the Arcadian KVD21 gateway. They do look similar, but one way to tell them apart is the uh, Arcadian gateway is shorter and it does not have a power button on the back. So the Sagemcom is going to be taller and it has a on off button that is on the back of the gateway. A couple of things that we're going to need in order to do this, you're going to need a computer, you're going to need an internet connection, and preferably you're going to need an ethernet cable. You can do this over Wi-Fi though. I'm going to be covering how to do this both on a Windows PC as well as a Mac if you're running a Mac OS. Uh, we're going to do the Windows PC version first and then we'll show you how to do it in Mac OS after Windows. So depending on which one you need, you can skip to that part of the video. Okay, so switching over to Microsoft Windows, we're going to be using Windows 11 for the purposes of this. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder on my desktop to keep all of the, the files that we're going to be working with uh, for the video in. Uh, you don't have to do this. If you choose not to, just note that it's probably going to go to your downloads folder automatically unless you choose to save it somewhere else. Uh, but for us, we're going to be working with this folder here on my desktop. So the first thing that we need to do after we create a folder is uh, you're going to go to your web browser and we're going to go to this pastebin website. Now big shout out to Nader Tater for uh, creating another script for one of these gateways. Uh, I'm going to put the link for this website down in the description below. You're going to see this download button here on the right. We're going to right click and go save link as and that's going to allow you to choose where we save uh, the file. You can just click download but again it will go to your downloads folder. So after we save this we're going to go make sure that it's actually in the folder that we saved it to real quick. And it looks like it's ready to go. So one thing that we do need to do is we need to make sure that we have file extensions turned on so you can see that we can't see that it's a text file. So in Windows 11 at the top you're going to click view and then you're going to go to show and we're going to click file name extensions to make sure that's turned on. And now you can see that we can see that it says .txt at the end of the file name. Now if you have Windows 10, uh, I can show you real quick. You're going to open up your file explorer or whatever folder you have it in and you should have a view tab at the top here. You're going to select that. And then over on the right where it says show slash hide, uh, you might have to click that button. It might be open like you can see here on my PC, but you want to make sure that that box is checked next to the file name extension. Switching back over to Windows 11, the first thing we want to do is right click on the file and I'm going to go ahead and copy it. And then I'm going to right click in an empty space in the folder and I'm going to paste it. That way we are basically duplicating the file so if there's any issues or we need access to the code, we still have the original text document. From here, I'm going to take the one that says copy and I'm going to right click on it and we're going to rename it because we need to change the file extension from a text file to a PowerShell script. So in Windows 11, you're going to click on this icon here. Uh, in Windows 10, it will just say rename. And then I'm going to delete uh, all the way back to where it says script. And then I'm just going to type dot ps1. And that's going to change it from a text document to a PowerShell script and then press enter and then from here you're going to get a pop-up or a warning and it's going to tell you that you, you know the file extension is changing we're just going to click yes now that that's done you can see that our file has successfully changed from a text file to a powershell script but before we run it if you've never ran any uh, powershell scripts before uh, we need to go ahead and open up powershell as an administrator so we'll just go down and we'll search for it right here in the start bar and then here on the right hand side we will uh, select run as administrator. Once you get that open um, we're going to need to run some code and I'll put that down in the description for you guys. But just so you guys don't uh, take my word for it that we're not doing anything crazy to your computer you can see the code here for setting the execution policy. This came straight from the Microsoft website which I will show you right here and I'll put the link for that down in the description as well. So. As long as we all trust each other, you have the code typed, we're going to press enter. 
and then you're going to get this execution policy change message and we're going to type Y for yes that we want to change the policy so that we can run the script and you're going to press enter and if it's successful you should just see a prompt so from here we can go ahead and close the PowerShell window and you can right click on the script file and we're going to click run with PowerShell if it works you should be prompted with a window that looks like the one that we just closed that's asking you for your gateway password if it doesn't work then you're gonna see it open and then it's gonna immediately close just like that but don't worry what we can do is we can double click on the text file and we're gonna copy all of the code from the text file so you can right click and do select all or you can press control a it will do the same exact function and then you can right click copy or press control C and then we're going to take that and we're going to go and we're going to open up PowerShell um, by itself, not as an administrator, but we're just going to open the application normally. And then you're going to press Control V to paste all of the code into PowerShell. And then you should see uh, a prompt like this and it should ask you to enter the password for the gateway. If for whatever reason it doesn't, you can try pressing return and then it should say enter password for the gateway. But from here, you're going to take the uh, administrative password off of the back of your T-Mobile 5G home internet gateway, which you will see right here. Make sure that you're not using the Wi-Fi name and Wi-Fi password. It needs to be the one that says admin and then whatever the admin password is. If you change this during the setup of your gateway, then you would use whatever password that you changed it to. Some users have reported that they had trouble when they changed it, so if you reset back to the factory default password, um, it will usually work then. Once you get your password typed in, um, just press enter, and then you should be greeted with a screen that looks like this that gives you some different options. And uh, for us, we want to turn off both the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, so we're going to press 1 and press Enter. And then to turn off the 5 gigahertz band, we're going to press 3 and then press Enter. And you'll see that it does give you a message that says that it's turning it off, and then it returns back to this same menu to allow us to pick another selection. Um, so once all that's done, then if you'd like to verify the changes, then you can press 6 and it will download a config file so if we ran the script then the config file is going to populate into the same folder as the script which you'll see here if you copy and pasted all of the code into the PowerShell document then the config file is actually going to download into your users folder on your hard drive so in my case I'm going to go to this PC and then my C drive and then users and then um, the name for my user and then it'll be all the way down here at the bottom right here now we can go ahead and open up the config text document and verify whether or not we turned off our wireless radios and as you can see here on the first line where it says 2.4 gigahertz is radio enabled it says false and that means that we successfully turned off that radio now to verify the 5 gigahertz we do need to move some of this text due to the formatting of the document um, but you will see that the 5 gigahertz, it's right here, it says is radio enabled and it also says false. So we successfully turned off both radios. And that concludes the Windows portion of this video. If you'd like to skip ahead to the router portion, um, go ahead. Otherwise, Mac OS is next. Okay, for all you Mac OS users, the first thing we need to do is install the latest version of Microsoft PowerShell. I'll throw a link down in the description for that. When you get to this site, we're going to scroll all the way down to where it says installation via direct download. Now, depending on whether or not you have an Intel processor or Apple Silicon, such as an M1 or M2, is going to determine which link you pick. For me, I have a Intel processor, so I'm going to pick the x84 package, but if you don't, you're going to want to select the other one. Now in most modern versions of Mac OS, we can't just open this file straight from our downloads because it's going to think it's malicious because it's not signed by Apple. So if you try to open it, it will look something like this. So you're going to need to go to wherever you downloaded the folder, or the file, excuse me, and for the purposes of this video, I just put it on my desktop. So we're going to right click on it and we're going to click open. And then you're going to say, yep, we trust it. You're going to click open again. 
and then we're just going to walk through the installation process. So you're going to click continue. I only have one hard drive, so I'm basically just going to cruise right through this. You're going to type in your password uh, to install applications on your computer and then click close. The next thing that we need to do is we're going to go to a website called Pastebin. And there, um, another YouTuber named Nader Tater, big shout out to him, he's developed a script uh, in conjunction with someone else that's going to allow us to actually do this today. So uh, he gets all credit here for this process. Um, I'll put the link down in the description for this. If you just want this to go to the downloads folder, you can just click this download button that you see here. But for me, I'm going to right click it and click save link as so that I can put it on the desktop just for the purposes of this video. And so what this is going to do is it's going to save a text document. And um, after we get this file saved, we're going to go ahead and open up that text document. And what you're going to see in here is just a bunch of code that's part of this script. So if we did this in Windows, we'd actually turn it into an actual PowerShell script. But in Mac OS, it doesn't run. So we're going to go in and click inside the text box. And you can uh, press Command A uh, to select all of the text. Uh, and then Command C to copy it all. Or you could right click and click copy. Um, from there, we're going to click on Spotlight up top in the right hand corner and type Terminal. And we're gonna, once we get terminal opened up, we're gonna type PWSH and press return. And that's actually gonna start PowerShell. And from here, we're going to press uh, Command V, and that's gonna paste this entire script. And if everything worked properly, you're gonna see here at the bottom, it's gonna say enter password for the gateway. Now you're gonna get that password off of the back of your T-Mobile gateway, and you wanna make sure that you're not using the one that says Wi-Fi name and Wi-Fi password. You want to use the one that says username admin and then whatever the admin password is. Now you could have changed this when you set up your gateway and if you did then that's the password that you use. But if you didn't then you just type the one that's on the sticker like what you see here. So after you get your password all typed in, uh, if it is the correct password, then you're going to be prompted with this screen that you see here that's going to give you a bunch of different options in order to turn the Wi-Fi off. And so what we want to do is we're going to press um, number one to turn off the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and we're going to press return and then from there you'll see that it gives us a little prompt that says that it's uh, working and then it comes back to the same main menu and then if we want to turn off 5 gigahertz, we're going to press 3 and press return and do the exact same thing. And then if you want to verify any of these changes, you would press 6 to download the config file and I'll show you where that's going to be saved at. At this point, if everything was successful, we can press Q to quit and then you can press Command Q to terminate terminal. And then from there, we're going to go to the hard drive on your computer. So for me, it's labeled Macintosh HD. And then you're going to do your users folder, whatever your user folder name is, and your config file is going to be saved in there. So if we open that up, you can see that our 2.4 gigahertz is radio enabled, says false, which means that we did successfully turn that off. And then for the 5 gigahertz, uh, you can see that that is also false. So both of those were off and it was successful. This concludes the Mac OS portion of the video and next we'll get into adding a third party router. So when we connect a third party router, we're gonna run an ethernet cable from the back of our T-Mobile home internet gateway to the back of our router. Now the back of the router could look a couple of different ways. You could have a blue internet port. It looks like this. It could say WAN instead of internet. Um, it could have a globe like this or it could have neither and it could just have four ports like this in which case you just plug it into the first ethernet port. Now in my case I'm using an Eero mesh system so it just has two ports on the back that are different speeds so I'm gonna plug my ethernet cable into the back of my Sagemcom gateway it doesn't matter which port we use here you do want to make sure that your modem is turned off before you do this and then we can pick either port um, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to just pick the one gig port. The other one is for two and a half gigabits per second, but T-Mobile Home Internet isn't that fast. So I'll save the faster port for my 
uh, home network for my network attached storage. Once you have the cable plugged into both devices, you can power the modem back on and then we can plug in the router. From there, um, every router is going to be different, so you're going to have an app or you're going to have to go to an IP address and configure it, but one thing that's worth mentioning is that you should put the router into bridge mode or access point mode in order to not have a double NAT. Now if you don't do this, will the internet not work? No, it'll still work, but it will affect gaming. So anybody who plays console gaming, PC gaming, you will have a moderate to a strict NAT because now all of your data is going through the NAT process twice, which can cause a delay in how fast your data gets in and out of your system. And that about does it for this one. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know down in the comments whether or not this worked for you and how well you like the SageMCOM gateway. I'm currently doing some testing on all three of the gateways that T-Mobile provides, and I'm curious which one you guys like the most. Until next time, peace.